care of people. Guess what I'm doing? Yeah, me and my homeboy Jamie over here. We're gonna see the mighty Cannibal Corpse, Obituary, Cryptopsy, and Abysmal Dawn over at Ziggy's by the Sea in a few hours. Oh my gosh, incredible. See, in Florida, you know, they have the alligators, you know, and you, you know, there are alligators in the swamps, but sometimes obituaries in the swamp. Yeah, that's right. So next time you're playing pitfall, you're not going to be swinging over alligators. You're going to be swinging over big friggin' obituary loaders, and it's awesome. And in New York, in Buffalo, New York, there's all kinds of little rare buffalo species that roam around, and cannibal corpses there, too. Oh, my God. Yeah, we're really stoked. This is my first time seeing cannibal corpse and my second time seeing obituary. <laughs> oh, my God. Of course, Crick Pops and Abysmal Dawn are awesome, too, but oh, my God. How are you feeling, Jamie? I'm stoked. First time seeing Cannibal. First time seeing Obituary, Eric of Domsey. And what is the Abysmal Dawn? Yep, Abysmal Dawn, technical death metal from California. I'm excited. I'm He's excited. excited, and how can you blame him? I'm not excited <laughs> about the traffic, though. Yeah, the traffic's not going to be too good, but guess what? We're going to have so much fun. I'm going to mosh like crazy. And this guy, he's going to mosh for a little bit, too. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We're here. We're here. We're here. Ah! The mighty venue that will show the mighty cannibal corpse and obituary. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> now, that is the definition of awesome. I'm never going to get bored looking at that. Now, that was probably the best concert I've ever been to in my life. It, it was unbelievable. I've been to intense shows before, but nothing like this. This was crazy. Let's see, we arrived in Wilmington really early, and uh, we walked around, got some pizza, looked at music stores, found a whole bunch of fans and metalheads walking amongst us in the streets. We walked in the club, I was meeting a few friends, and um, let's see, Abysmal Dawn came on, and uh, I haven't actually listened to them before the show, so it was it was really nice to listen to them. They're like a, they're technical death metal with a soul. It's not easy being an opening band. Because no matter how good your music is, you know, it's going to take a few minutes to get everybody warmed up, get everybody headbanging, get the moshing going, get the stage diving going. However, they were so energetic and so passionate about what they were doing, and their presence was so good. I mean, they were all smiling the whole time. They were all encouraging headbanging, encouraging circle pits. I mean, it was just, it was just really good, and everybody liked them. I mean, they played for 10 minutes, and then everybody just started moshing and going wild, throwing the horns and everything. It was just really cool. So they played about 20 minutes, and then Cryptopsy came on. <sighs> now, I've always loved Cryptopsy. They're, they're just... I was a little confused when Cryptopsy came on because they didn't have any flapping heads, you know, given that they're from Canada. But what was weird was that in the merch stands, I mean, they had copies of their albums, and one of the albums they had, they had a vinyl copy of The Unspoken King. I don't know anybody who would want to buy that on CD, let alone vinyl. You know what it probably was? It was probably like first presses that were left over from 2009, and everybody knew the album was going to suck, so nobody bought it. <laughs> anyway, but their singer, oh my god. I mean, he stood in one place, but he had this intensely disturbed, disgusted, intimidating look, and it worked so well. I mean, and, and his hair was partly what did, so the appearance and the presence was definitely there, and... Oh man, they're they're so heavy, and the bass player—you definitely tell that he had full steam, full of energy throughout the whole thing. I've always admired Cryptopsy for their bass playing and their drumming. This this show was no exception. They played stuff from most of their albums, like they played None So Vile, they played stuff from Whisper Supremacy, they played stuff from uh, uh, their self-titled album. So it was it was a really good set list, and they played for 30 minutes. <laughs> then the mighty Obituary came on the stage. And it was absolutely massive. They started with Redneck Stomp. After that, John walked on stage and they played Century of Lies. Love how confident they are about the songs on their new album. Not many bands can feel that way and they rely a little too much on their uh, their back catalog, but not Obituary. So the moshing and the stage diving was nuts already, but when Obituary got on stage, the place went crazy. There was all kinds of stage diving going on. I, I probably wouldn't be lying if that whole night I stage dived about 15 times. Yeah, that's right. I got that close to John Tardy, Trevor Pierce, and the rest of the band. <laughs> that felt good. So they played about 10 songs and just satisfied everybody. So heavy, so intense, 
I'd say that I liked Obituary just as much this time as I did last time. Now, last time, when they got on stage, there was smoke machines, and you couldn't see their faces for the first minute. It made it all theatrical and intimidating. Not this time. They just got on stage and started playing. And also last time, there was a wall of death, which we tried to do. A few of us called it out, but nobody really knew what to do, so it just kind of fizzled. <laughs> And what I really loved is how passionate they are about the fans, because during the uh, during the long instrumental sessions, John Tardy will just be standing to the side with the most satisfied look on his face because of how the crowd was reacting and how everybody was having a lot of fun. But it wasn't just John Tardy that was giving satisfied looks to the crowd, because while Obituary was playing, you could see uh, backstage George Fisher from Canal Corpse. He was just peeking out from backstage at the crowd, just watching how nuts we were going. So we were already shivering with anticipation before Campbell Corpse came on stage. And when the first few members of the band came on stage, like before George, oh man, <laughs> we were all screaming and going wild. And then George walked on stage. Boom, boom, boom. Well be done. <laughs> Everybody just went absolutely nuts, and then they then they started off with evisceration plague. Mosh pit went nuts. Everybody went crazy, and I've been to some crazy mosh pits and crazy shows before. But as soon as they got on stage, everybody just started stage diving to the point where they, we were overlapping each other and we were throwing each other everywhere, and everyone was just going insane. And there was some crazy guy like close to the stage that was like massaging George's shoe or something. It's like, uh, what are you doing? I'm pretty sure he doesn't like you doing that, but he's he's. He's a chill guy, so he's not going to say anything. <laughs> I mean, it got so out of hand that the security people were really intimidated by us. <laughs> I mean, they were giving us some crazy looks like... I mean, it was so wild that George, after the song was over, he was like, You guys are crazy! <laughs> in fact, the stage diving got so nuts that security actually had to intervene and get in front of the stage and stop it for a whole song. And then after that song was over, George was like, You guys are the rowdiest crowd we've had in the past few years. We love it. We love you're having fun, but, uh, but here's the thing. You can stage dive. Just don't be out here too long and watch out for these guys. And watch out for me. Cause I'll check you. <laughs> and of course, because the Broncos won the Super Bowl recently, and he's he's a diehard Broncos fan, he was talking a bunch of smack about the Panthers, <laughs> making everybody mad. I was just laughing the whole time. It was great. <laughs> the crowd energy was there. I mean, there was probably about seven or eight hundred of us, and for the most part, everybody was real nice to each other. I mean, there there were a couple fights going on, and if there's only one or two fights and you don't really see it going on, then it doesn't really affect you. It doesn't leave a bad taste in your mouth. But when you almost get in a fight, it's a different story. I've never been. I've never been in a fight, I've never really made anybody mad at these shows I've been going to. However, at one point, I was crowd surfing, and uh, you know, when you're near the stage or if you're near the mosh pit, you should know the risks that you might get hit, you might get kicked by accident, and chances are that nobody really means anything by it. But I was crowd surfing, and I must have accidentally kicked this woman in the face without meaning to. And as I sunk to the floor, I could feel somebody like hit me on the lip. And somebody was pulling my hair while I was um, while I was on the floor. I mean, somebody was grabbing onto my arm, and somebody was grabbing onto my hair. I'm sitting there thinking, man, what's going on? Hey, grab my arm, not my hair. I didn't know what was going on at the time, but I saw somebody reach uh, reach for that hand that was grabbing my hair. And as I was getting up, I saw this uh, this tall guy who saw what was going on, and this woman who was real mad at me. I was walking away, and he just escorted her out of the club as she tried to swing at me. I just love that type of camaraderie with us metalheads. And it didn't ruin my night at all because, because number one, nobody got hurt, and number two, I didn't even know what happened until after the fact, so. And the sound was really good too. I mean, sometimes you go to these shows and they just amp up the bass like crazy, and your ears will ring for a few days after that. However, they didn't go crazy on the bass this time, and I, it's only been two days and I'm still not 100% of my right ear, but it was nowhere near as mad as my past shows. I mean, I walked out of there, I was still able to hear perfectly fine. But yeah, I mean, you could definitely tell, like, ever, all the bands, they just had this great personality. I mean, George Fisher was really chill, Alex and the rest of Cannibal Corpse, they were looking down at their guitars, all intimidating, and it was just, oh man, I, I can go on all night, and it was just so fun, and it was an amazing lineup. It's not often that you get a lineup where all bands are awesome, but I'm definitely going to see Cannibal Corpse again in the future whenever I can. <laughs> and anybody who hasn't seen Cannibal Corpse, or anybody who doesn't like their studio albums necessarily, but can listen to them, see them live. I mean, they are just unbelievable. I mean, I know that some metal people are like, oh, Cannibal Corpse, nah. See them live. Completely different world. I've always loved the albums, but I've never seen them live, so this was definitely an education. <laughs> and at the end of the show, George threw out about five or six copies of the set list. I happened to catch one of them, and I, I had it framed already. It's it's an amazing set list, and I was, I'm just... Ugh. 
And the other souvenir I have is this Camel Corpse Thermal right here. It keeps the drinks really cold. Well, thank you for watching. Take care.